Hi everyone, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Miki from uh, 353 Solutions. Uh, and we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about uh, Conda, which is another package manager for Python. Uh, a lot of you are uh, data scientists and you really don't care about package managers. But uh, th there is a joke that says that uh, I really don't care it works on your machine, we're not selling your machine to customers. And the idea is that uh, you want to have a reproducible environment so operations can take whatever you do on, uh, when doing research and produce it in production. And for that, uh, we need to uh, work with package managers and make sure that we can give them also the right environment to work. And I've been in several companies when it has been a really big issue when someone is developing an algorithm. And then when they come to production, production has one version of pandas, and they work on a different version of pandas, and I see people nodding their heads, so uh, it's a familiar problem. Uh, I have to give credits, uh, so the title of the talk uh, is uh, stolen from, uh, from the Matt email client. Uh, um, they, they say there, um, uh, but he said it's credited to me, so this is fine, right? Uh, actually, me over there is Michael Elkins, who is the main developer, but uh, this is fine. So uh, let's, let's dive right in. Uh, and, and let's have a look first at uh, what, what's wrong with PIP and virtual env. Why, why, do we, uh, why do we actually have pandas? So uh, let's start a machine. Right, so, um, Kelsey Hightower said that the, the first rule of Python Club is that you never touch the system Python, right? You always do it on another Python. Uh, the reason is that a lot of system utilities are using the system Python, and you really don't want to mess with what's going on there. So, uh, we have another Python installed. And to show you that I'm not really cheating, uh, I actually have uh, not just the Miniconda Python, but the Python from uh, python.org installed at uh, slash opt. So we'll do uh, opt uh, pip. And we'll try to install PyOBDBC, which is a package for uh, installing, for working with databases, with various databases such as uh, MSSQL. Um, And it's getting uh, PyODBC from the web, which is always a good thing to do while you're presenting. <laughs> it gives you a lot of time for the talks. Uh, and, and we fail. And the reason we fail is because PyODBC is a C extension, which is very common for a lot of uh, data science packages. And it requires some headers, external headers, uh, SQL.h, et etc., et cetera, uh, which is uh, something that's uh, not, not uh, coming with with the package itself. It, it assumes that the system already have that, so you need to start working with now with the system package manager, uh, APT, YAM, Pacman, Pick Your Poison. Uh, each of them will, uh, will do that. Uh, however, uh, Conda is a bit different in that. And, and when we do Conda install PyODBC, oh! <laughs> wow, wow. I, I kicked something here, so. Uh, Yes. A bit Woo! Yeah. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. Yes, I may proceed. Um, it's going. It's going to install. And if you look at the, where it's installed, we see that Miniconda also brought all the system libraries that are required to install the, um, the package. So one thing uh, to ni nice about Conda, it's not just a Python package manager. It's a package manager in the general case. You can install R packages with it. You can install uh, system libraries. You can uh, do a lot of other things that makes it much simpler. I teach a lot of data science, and uh, once Anaconda or Miniconda came, telling students just come in with, all, with scikit-learn and matplotlib and pandas, everything installed, is much, much easier now. Yeah. 
before that, um, it has been be really problematic. Uh, to be fair, uh, PIP now has um, something called um, Many Linux One uh, platform, which actually bundles a lot of these things. And if you now install packages such as, for example, PsychoPG or Pandas uh, with PIP, you'll see that it comes with Many Linux One, which usually works really well. Uh, the only uh, issue with it is a lot of maintainers are not aware of this uh, possibility, so it's not that common. <coughs> Second thing is the, because they're picking the lowest common denominator for many, many Linux packages, they're using CentOS 5, which means that you miss about 10 years of uh, bug fixes and compiler optimization uh, to your code. Right, so now that I convince you uh, how to, uh, that Conda is a, really, it's a good idea and it's nice to work with. Let's see how we can work with it. Uh, so I'll start another machine. Okay, so I'm saying, is this too low? Should I bring it up? Yeah. Oh, okay, so why don't you say anything? Yeah. Uh. Okay. So, Okay, so uh, you have two options. One, one is to get the Anaconda distribution. Anaconda is coming with a lot of packages pre-installed on your machine, and it's really useful if you're working uh, with data science and you want to get everything out of the box. But uh, it's pretty big. It, when you uncompress it, it's on a Linux machine, it's about two gigabytes of, uh, of data. And sometimes for production, you really just want the packages that you want. So there's something called Miniconda, and Miniconda is just Conda. And, and Python and all the required packages, but apart from that, uh, nothing, nothing else comes. Um, actually, I did a mistake. Hold on just a second. Um, so uh, you, can, you get an installer on Windows, on a Mac, on, on Linux, uh, we run a bash command to install it. And we can do it in a batch mode, so when you're installing packages automatically, uh, so slash dl, slash miniconda, and we can tell it that we want it to in a batch mode, and we can tell it that we want it to be installed on miniconda. All right, and this, this container is a vanilla Ubuntu. Uh, 16.10, and now, now we have uh, Anaconda installed. All right, so let me do a couple of tweaks. One is uh, I'll set the path to uh, So we'll pick this one first, and to make sure that uh, the shell does not remember anything else, uh, I'm removing the cache. The shell is caching where it finds power programs, so this is a useful thing to do. And for my sake, uh, I'm going to do a very important thing. All right? Uh, yeah, VI is burned to my fingers. I can't, I can't do that. Um, so when we look uh, now, uh, Python, what did I do wrong? Uh, no, now it's. So we see that the uh, Minicona came with 361, which is the latest Python, but you can also have it in uh, Python 2 version. And uh, it really doesn't matter which one you pick because when you create environments, when we see later, you can specify which Python version, which version of Python you want your environment to be, so you should be fine. Okay, uh, we can ask Conda for uh, some information and tell us where it's installed, where are the packages, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, to see that everything is working. 
Okay, uh, and usually we work with quantum with different environments. This allows us to have uh, two applications on the same machine, work with two different versions of uh, any packages. But you don't have to. If, you're in, if you work, for example, in Docker containers, you can install everything to the root, uh, root environment without specifying one, but we're going to create an environment and work inside that environment. So we're going to do uh, conda create dash dash name, and we'll call it PyCon IR. Right, and it tells us what to do in order to activate the environment. We need to do source activate PyCon IR to be inside the environment, and when we want to uh, get out, uh, we do source deactivate. And the environment itself is found in uh, Miniconda Enums. And we, if you look at the bin directory, uh, we see that something is missing there, right? Uh, there's no Python. Okay, we created an empty environment, and as I said, Conda is uh, a package manager not just for Python. So when you create an environment, you really need to tell it also uh, if you want Python and which Python do you want. Uh, so we, we can just do Conda install Python. Really? And this is going to uh, take Python and install it uh, in the virtual environment. As I said, you can specify the Python version. And then you can uh, have an environment of Python 2 or Python 3, uh, whatever you pick. Oh, come on. It always amazes me how much my life is being spent on watching bars progress slowly. <laughs> Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. Why is that? <coughs> Whoa. Uh. Okay. So this is faster. Uh, no. Okay, now when we look at the bin director, we have Python and pip and uh, everything else that we're used to from Python. Right, and we say, uh, which Python now? Uh, we see that we get the Python from our environment, not the Python that was there before. Okay. Uh, installing packages, just conda install. And this, because we are inside the virtual environment, it's going to install it to our environment. It's not going to install it to the root environment. Uh, you can specify also the name and say uh, which environment you want this package to be installed. And yes, we have that. OK. Another thing uh, nice about Conda's environment is that are, they are actually relocatable. You can uh, just copy them around. So I can do source uh, deactivate. And then And if I import Flask, you'll see that it's Flask from the new environment. So this is nice. You can have one build machine that is exposed to the internet. It will run all the commands to install it. Once you have a, a library inside your internal network, you don't have to expose your machines outside. They can, you can just copy it over and use this environment for uh, other packages, which is a nice addition for them. 
Okay, so let's go back. Source. Oh, yeah. Yeah, control. Thank you. OK. So uh, this is installing packages and creating one. Sometimes we want a specific version of a package, and it's usually a good idea in general just to have al always to version your uh, packages. So in this case, if there's a new version that comes in, the API changes or some bug was introduced, uh, you don't accidentally, while installing a new environment, get a new version. You need to, if a new version comes, you need to, you can clone an environment, run a test on it, and then make sure that uh, it's good. Okay, so let's do a conda search for uh, both of three. And we see that we have several versions of both of three available for us. And we can say conda install both of three. And this is just one equal sign because they have to make it complicated, right? In the people, uh, it's two. And then it will pick the, this version and install it. It's always good to keep your dependencies in a file and put this file in source control so uh, you can give this file later to operations and they can use this file to make all the installations. It's not something you write. Uh, we usually start by uh, conda and export. And in, in the conda world, it's a YAML file. Uh, in the people world, we have request.txt, which is a text file. And then. Uh, we see that uh, we have many definitions. I uh, tend to pick only the top level definitions and only the dependencies, if nothing else. Uh, the reason is that a lot of times, if you, uh, let's say, work on a Mac, some of the low level de uh, dependencies will be different than the ones on, uh, on Linux. And this is why I keep only the top level one version and all the rest are gone. So I don't need the name and the channels. Uh, I need both of three. And I'm going to specify the Python version. Flask was there as well. Uh, and this is the Python version I'm working with. And I can delete the rest. OK, so uh, this is how it looks. The YAML file with the list of uh, every package and the version. And And when we create it, you can create an environment, tell it this is the file that uh, we want, and everything is going there. You see now that the installation is much quicker. This is because all these files are cached uh, locally. And Conda actually also don't copy them over. It creates hard links for you. So uh, it will run much faster. Okay, you can also clone an existing environment. So you can tell the, the environment to clone an existing one. This is really useful when you're testing new packages. So you say clone this environment, and then activate the environment, upgrade the package, run your test, see that you're going. Sometimes packages are not found on the main channel. So I'm going to search fast over. Uh, and this, this is not found on the main channels uh, of Conda. Uh, we have uh, another tool, uh, which is called Anaconda, which lets us look in other channels. There's the default channel, defaults channel that uh, is uh, the main one with the packages, but you can have other uh, packages or your own packages. So uh, conda install, and I need to install it to the root directory. Um, and uh, conda client. And then a conda client is the one that knows how to look inside all the other uh, channels and install in them. And now I can do can okay, this will show us uh, several uh, channels you see my private channel um, there but the one I highly recommend that you look at if you have the 
if its founder is something called Conda Forge. And Conda Forge is a community effort by uh, a lot of uh, people in the data science community to provide more packages that are not in the default channel. So if you find Conda Forge, this is usually uh, the best uh, option for you. And you can do uh, Conda install channel Conda Forge fast. Avro. By the way, while looking at it, uh, I'm looking for a maintainer to fast Avro. It's been a while since I've done Avro. So if you're working with the Avro file format and want to help in open source, you're more than welcome to approach me later on, and I'll gladly give you the keys to the kingdom. Uh, and, and this is used by companies, like terabytes of data running every night on this. And I feel sorry for them that I don't. Uh. Uh, okay, so it's upgrading also Conda from the uh, environment, and then it's getting fast arrow. And if you go to our uh, en uh, environment file, what we can do here is just add the channel for uh, what we're looking for. So we have uh, channels. And the way, uh, the way Conda works, it will first try to find things in the, f in the first channel, and then the second and the third. So it will try to pick up things from defaults first, and after that, uh, from, the, from there. All right, but again, uh, we have in, in PyPI about 100,000 packages and more, and not all of them are, not are in either the channels of Conda. Sometimes we really need to use PIP. So, uh, for example, if I'm uh, looking for a package called timeat, uh, we won't find it. Okay, it's in PyPI, uh, and the way we do it is we go to our environment, and we tell it in pip, I want to have a timeat, and I can specify the version the way Pip likes it, with a double equal sign. And once I do that, uh, I can create an environment. Uh, again, again, Pip install also works. Pip uh, comes with Anaconda. And they usually play nice together. A uh, couple of things that you can do. Uh, there is a conda rc file which you can uh, state all kinds of preferences if you want to change the prompt or don't change the prompt uh, when, you when you do source activate, uh, what are your default channels, etc., etc. It's also in a YAML format. Uh, you can build packages if you distribute pa Python packages. Uh, you can do that as well. Uh, there's uh, the same way that you do Python setup uh, uh, bdist egg. You can do Python setup bdist conda and it will create a conda package. And after that, serving it internally in your organization is either putting it in some uh, location and just giving the file name in the environment file, or just put an HTTP server over the build directory and you're good to go. Uh, and that's about it. Questions? Yes? Uh, I just want to make sure Python is the same Python. Well, this is a Python for the Conda one. Uh, I think nowadays you can do pip install conda and then, and then it will work, but I don't know where this goes. Uh, I never tried that. But yeah, you're right. Once you create an anaconda an environment, it has Python, has everything in there, so you don't touch the system Python. No, I didn't answer the question. So I, I installed anaconda. Yes. And then I created a uh, conda, created another environment. Yes. But I didn't install a Python into that environment, but I was able to install separately other packages. So w w once you install another package, usually the dependencies of these packages are Python itself. So it will go and fetch Python in to that. Well, in the, if you look in the bin, I looked in the bin, it didn't install another Python there. It just, it just reused the original Python. Mm. I'm not familiar with this behavior. So, sorry. Yeah. 
I think if you create an environment, and we can try it later on uh, when we have time, we can create an environment and an empty one and just install one of the Python packages. I think it will also bring in Python, but we can check it later. More questions? Yes. Would you recommend uh, replacing virtual, virtual and it, it really depends. If you're doing a lot of py packages which are pure Python and you, you have a lot of dependencies from PyPI, probably not. If you're doing a lot of scientific packages and packages that are composed from uh, compile C extensions and they need d dependencies like system libraries, probably Conda is a, uh, Conda is a better uh, approach for that. But it really depends on the use case. If you, if you, well, if you there's Anaconda and Miniconda. And Anaconda is a full distribution with a lot of packages already there. It's for people who want to do data science, so they just download Anaconda and they already have everything inside. So it's there. It's also coming with something called the Navigator, which is a UI to create environments uh, and, and several other uh, things that you can do with it. Yes. Yes. Um, not that I can think of. This channel is pretty stable, so it's pretty, it's pretty good. Uh, they let people like me in, so maybe not, but uh, um, yeah, I don't think there's a downside for that. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. More questions? Yes. Uh, personally, no. No, I know people, someone told me that they're using it for our packages, uh, but I, personally, I don't have experience. Okay, so we're out of time. I leave you with the vacuum cleaner paradox, which says that it sucks when it doesn't, and it doesn't <coughs> when it does. And think about that, and thank you very much. <laughs>